be revived and powerless empty believers will be filled the holy spirit is being poured out on all flesh your sons and your daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions the holy spirit is pouring out but i submit a question to you do you thirst do you thirst do you thirst the holy spirit is pouring out have you received your portion yet heaven is bearing down on earth and slowly but surely the tide has been rising a breaking flood of glory is sweeping through the earth the spirit of revival has come upon us driven by the breath of god the holy ghost and i don't know about you but i'm filled with expectation tonight do you have any expectation in your bones tonight i'm filled with expectation i'm filled with expectation a frustrated minister who was not experiencing the power of god when he ministered once asked charles spurgeon his opinion on why this was happening spurgeon asked a question do you mean you expect god to show up in power every time you minister embarrassed the minister said well of course not Spurgeon answered brilliantly, then that is why you are not experiencing the power of God when you minister. I came to tell you, I believe God wants to move tonight. Every time I come into this tabernacle, I'm expecting a move. I don't care who's behind this pulpit. Every time I come into the house of God, I'm expecting a move. I'm expecting a move. This is why we're here to meet with God Almighty, to be changed, transformed, and refreshed. I came with some fresh manna from heaven and we're gonna get right into it so you can go back to your seats because God wants to speak to his people tonight. Are you expecting? Are you anticipating? Worship team, you can stay with me. I'm not gonna take too long tonight, but I came having just broken open a rock until the water gushed forth in prayer. I came with a message for every dry and weary heart. Times of refreshing are here. Times of refreshing are here. I want our young people to know times of refreshing are here. I want our saints to know the times of refreshing are here. They're upon us. The rain is here. Are you in position tonight? The spirit is being outpoured on all who come beneath his downpour. Are you underneath his downpour? Allow me to paint a picture for you of the driest place on earth. The Atacama Desert in northern Chile. It runs for 600 to 700 miles and receives virtually no rain. This huge rocky wasteland has no more than a few drops of precipitation per year. An occasional fog rolls in to offer a few particles of moisture. The terrain is barren and mostly rock. But in March of 2015, something extraordinary happened. Clouds rolled in. Thunder shocked the silence. And then the heavens cracked open, and in a handful of hours, the huge wasteland of sand and rock received the equivalent of seven years worth of rain. The true miracle was to come because a few days later, everyone passing by rubbed their eyes and stared in absolute wonder, for as far as the eye could see, the barren landscape was suddenly alive with color. Practically overnight, the most arid and desolate place on earth had exploded with life. After years of barrenness, the desert burst forth with fruit and life. Word spread and visitors from all over the world arrived to see the miracle with their own eyes. And all because of the blessing of a single outpouring of rain. That's what a refreshing does. That's the time we're in, in God. 
Joel 2, 23 and 24. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil, the rain so desperately needed, and every barren, fruitless, powerless, and lifeless circumstance has a name. It's been far too long since we've seen this blessing poured out from heaven, but it's here. The rain is here. Refreshing is here. Revival is here. And just as rain is the only cure for drought, revival is our only hope for a sweeping end time harvest of souls. Sadly, Many of God's people and even the shepherds of his sheep have grown so accustomed to this dry and barren spiritual climate that they think it's normal. They've made peace with the powerless, lifeless, fruitless condition of modern Christianity. They've become satisfied with living without the life-giving reign of God. Church, we've gone far too long without a God-sent downpour and drenching of Holy Ghost power. Some call it an outpouring. Some call it a refreshing. Some call it a flood. Some call it a deluge. Some call it a move of God. I call it revival. Call it whatever you want, but it's here. Call it whatever you want, but it's upon us. And not only do we need it, not only do we desperately need it, but praise the Lord, it's here. We need it in our powerless personal lives. We need it in our loveless homes. And we need it in our dry, religious, watered-down, seeker-friendly churches. Only the reign of revival in all three of these areas can transform us, our families, our churches, our communities, and ultimately this lost and hell-bound world. The rain is falling upon this barren land again. And this outpouring will cause every barren place to break forth in power, life, and fruit. Would you like to know how you can see every barren place in your lives, your homes, and the church of Jesus Christ burst forth in power and in life and in fruit? Tonight's message is entitled, When the Barren Sing." Isaiah 54, 1 through 3, sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right and to the left your descendants come on your descendants come on your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited this scripture is talking about Israel she's compared to a barren woman and she's commanded to sing radical songs of praise during her most fruitless season of life. If she obeyed, revival would break out on every side of her. Each statement following this command carried with it a promise of increase. When the barren sing, increase comes. When the barren sing, fruit comes. When the barren sing, revival comes. And when the barren sing, refreshing comes. Increase, overflow, revival, fruit, abundance. It might look barren right now, but God says sing. It might look barren right now, but God says break forth in singing. It might look barren right now, but God says cry aloud. Sing until the clouds roll in. Break out into singing until the scent of rain invades your life. Break forth in praise until the rains fall. Isaiah 44, 3. I will pour water on him who is what? Thirsty and floods on the dry ground. 
I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. My God, my God, my God. The rain is here. Refreshing is at hand. And if you'd get a song in your heart and a praise in your belly, if you'd cry aloud, your children's children's children could be blessed by a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. It's time for the barren to sing. It's time for the barren to cry aloud. It's time for the barren to break forth into singing. I'm talking about a breakthrough song. I'm talking about a breakthrough praise. I'm talking about a breakthrough kind of worship. If you heed the word of the Lord, you will annihilate the enemy's plans. Second Chronicles 20 talks about King Jehoshaphat defeated his enemy by having his army sing and praise. The enemies turned on each other and fought themselves. If you heed the word of the Lord, you will align yourself with God's plans. Jonah, instead of complaining about his situation inside the belly of a whale, began to pray and praise and was vomited out on the shore of his destiny. If you heed the word of the Lord, it will have a ripple effect in the lives of everyone around you. Acts 16, you know the story, Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang hymns to God and an earthquake shook the prison, opening all the doors and freeing everyone. You want your husband saved? Come on, you want your wife on fire for God? You want your kids set free? You want those dry, barren circumstances to overflow with the goodness and the presence of God? Then you've got to break forth. You've got to break forth. You've got to sing. You've got to praise. You've got to let yourself loose in the Holy Ghost until it breaks. The choice is yours, but I'll prove to you in scripture why you want to be the one praising. Second Samuel 6, the Bible says David danced with all his might. Yes? He laid aside his royal garments and danced before the Lord in his ephod. Let me help somebody. Some people think David danced naked. He did not dance naked. You better keep your clothes on in church, especially in this church. So David, he's leaping and he's praising God with all his might. He's shouting, he's praising, he's letting loose in the Holy Ghost. He had a breakthrough kind of praise. And the Bible tells us that his wife began to talk about him. She began to look at him in a certain kind of way. She despised him in her heart because he danced before the Lord at the expense of his royal dignity. You know what God did? He cursed her womb because of her attitude towards praise. On one side, you have a breakthrough praise that leads to revival and increase in God's blessing upon David's bloodline and legacy, a kingdom that would last forever. On the other side, you have barrenness, lack of fruit, no breakthrough, a bad attitude, and no generational blessing. But when the barrens sing, when the barrens sing, when the barrens sing, everything changes. Everything can change. Everything, everything can change for you, for your children, for your family when the parents sing. This is how you shift an atmosphere. This is how you shift your circumstances. This is how you cause the rain to fall in every dead area of your life. We aren't seeking revival, hear me. We are seeking the reviver. We're not seeking revival. We're seeking the one who revives. So when you praise God, this is what is actually happening scripturally. The Bible says in Psalm 22, 3, that God is enthroned on the what? On the praises of his people. So he actually lives and dwells in our praises. That is the mystery and the miracle of a breakthrough praise. God's there. He lives there. He inhabits that place. The reviver shows up in your praises. You're searching for God, but you won't praise. You want to hear God's voice, but you won't praise. You want a word from God, but you won't utter a word of praise. 
God sang to us tonight, if the barren will just praise me. I don't care what the statistics say. I don't care what the doctor report says. I don't care what the bank account says. I don't care if the politics look crazy. I don't care if your family looks all jacked up right now. I don't care because if the barren, if the barren will sing, if the barren will burst forth in song, if the barren will praise, if they'll cry aloud, God's looking. He's looking for some praisers. He's looking for some praisers. He's looking for some praisers. I came to prophesy tonight. Sing, oh barren, sing. Sing, oh barren, sing. Sing, oh barren, sing. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Every negative word spoken about you will be canceled tonight. Say, neighbor. Every barren situation in your life will be canceled tonight. Say, neighbor, increase is here for you tonight. Say, neighbor, fruit is here for you tonight. Say, neighbor, the rain is here if you want it tonight. Say, neighbor, revival's here if you want it tonight. Now I'm going to take a detour for about 15 minutes and I'm going to come back. Bear with me. I'd like to pose a few questions for your consideration. If you are a blood-bought child of God, why are you facing barren circumstances? Why are there more powerless saints than powerful saints? Where is the evidence of increased abundance and anointing? Why are our children facing barren circumstances? Why are our youth facing barren circumstances? If we are God's people, why is our nation facing barren circumstances? I'll tell you why. There has been a breach. There has been a breach. Say it with me. Say, there has been a breach. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. First Peter 5, 8, be sober, vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There's been a breach. A gap in the wall, a break in the barrier, a rupture in our defense, a breach made by the enemy. Are you here? A split, a crack, a fracture, a rent, a rift, an opening, a gap, a hole, a fissure, a cleft, a breach in the wall, a breach in the barrier, a breach made by the enemy, our adversary, the devil. While the church slept, the devil devoured and barrenness resulted. Barren conditions in the lives of believers in our homes, in our marriages, in our children, in our schools, in our nation, in the world. Conditions that lack fruit. Conditions that are lifeless, powerless, and empty. Conditions void of the life of God and of his presence and of his freedom. Depravity, perversion, and abortion are protected, legalized, and celebrated. Our children are being fed lies from antichrist woke agendas. The the next generation is being mutilated. Women are lied to and force-fed a demonic death agenda masquerading as women's rights. Entertainment designed to distract us from true fulfillment has blinded believers and lulled us to sleep. Music concerts have turned into satanic rituals. The world that we as believers are supposed to reach and influence has crept in to the church. So our lost loved ones that we are so desperate to see saved 
walk into dead churches with dead preachers preaching dead messages. They don't hear Christ preach. They don't hear about the crucifixion and resurrection. They don't hear about heaven and hell, sin and redemption. They don't encounter the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. There's been a breach. The world that we as believers are supposed to reach and influence has crept into our homes. Filth on screens, distractions everywhere. No family prayer, no one standing up for righteousness. No one responding to the conviction in their heart to turn off that movie or open their Bible. Barren, godless, lifeless conditions. There's been a breach. The world that we as believers are supposed to reach and influence has crept into our hearts. You spend more time on social media than with God. You spend more time with the TV creating a vision for your life than God giving you a vision for your life. There has been a breach. This should not be. This should not be. These things should not happen. The reason these things are able to occur is because there has been a breach. The enemy has snuck in. He crept in while the church slept. The enemy has crept in on the church. The enemy has crept in on the family. The enemy has crept into the hearts of believers. There's been a breach. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He might be after America. He might be after our children and our marriages. But God is raising up a people full of the Holy Ghost and fire. And I'm not sure if you know what church you walked into tonight, but at the very foundation of this ministry lies a word, a promise. It's our assignment. It's who we are. It runs through our, bed, our blood and it beats in our hearts. Isaiah 58, 12, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of homes to dwell in. God is raising up young people. God is raising up single people. He's raising up mothers. He's raising up fathers. He's raising up saints. He's raising up some people full of the fire and the authority of God to repair every breach, to cast out devils, to lay hands on the sick, to win the lost and to praise God until the reign of heaven breaks forth. If that's you, shout. If that's you, give God a praise. If that's you, if you're gonna repair the breach, if that's you, give God a shout in the house tonight. you say there's been a breach but I'm gonna repair it tell your spouse there's been a breach but we're gonna repair it tell your children there's been a breach but we're gonna repair it let me address a couple breaches tonight very quickly I told you this message is called when the barren sing you see the enemy breached into the praise and worship in the church not here let me make that very very clear the church of Jesus Christ has musicians that are hired hands, singers that are full of the world, songs that make you feel depressed, lyrics all about self, no breakthrough, no rain, no oil, barren. But the hour cometh and now is where the true worshipers of God are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what we need. Say, I'm a worshiper. Do you believe it? Are you a worshiper? Are you a worshiper? Because I want you to understand, if you don't praise God, you will praise yourself. I'm looking for a few people tonight. You know you should have been dead. You know you should have lost your mind. You know you should be in a prison cell somewhere. Come on, I'm looking for a couple, few praisers tonight. You know, if it wasn't for Jesus, what your life would be like. You know he broke every chain. You know he saved your dark, lost soul. You know that you know that you know if it wasn't for Jesus, he would have spent an eternity in hell. Say, I'm a worshiper, that's what I am. 
Everybody might not like you, but don't lose your worship. Maybe some people won't even be able to stand you, but don't you lose that worship. Because a worshiper knows how to touch the heart of God. A worshiper knows how to get on their face. A worshiper knows how to be like David and say, against you only have I sinned. A worshiper knows how to shift an atmosphere. A worshiper says, we need a move of the spirit. Even if it takes all night, it's all right. Give me God. A worshiper is tired of church as usual. A worshiper can change a dry, dead atmosphere into a Holy Ghost downpour. A worshiper can sing in the face of her adversary until the rain comes, until the rock breaks forth with gushing water, until the flood comes, until the clouds swell, until the refreshing breaks forth. Your worship can repair areas where your adversary, the devil, has breached. Your praise can repair the breach in your personal life, in your home, in your family, in your marriage, in the church of Jesus Christ, and in this world. When the barons sing, when the barons sing, when the barons break forth into singing, when the barren cry aloud, anything is possible. Everything is possible. Matthew 13, 25, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. You see, this is how the enemy works. Believers are asleep or distracted, and then the enemy breaches through and sows all this garbage and discord, and then he leaves. So, we have breaches in the area of praise and worship, but we're repairing them, amen? We also have some breaches in the pews. And we definitely have some breaches in the pulpits of America. But I know that I know that I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And I know that I know that I know I'm in the company of some repairers of the breach. Come on. God is separating the saints from the ain'ts. God is raising up some preachers with a message. In Acts 8, it says, they went everywhere preaching the word. Who's they? It was the entire body of Christian believers. You're a preacher. You're a preacher. You should be a preacher. Preachers with a backbone. Preachers that will still preach against things like gay marriage and abortion. Preachers that preach Christ. Preachers that preach Christ. What does that mean? I assure you, preaching Christ does not mean preaching about Christ. A man might know all about the historical Jesus and yet not know Christ. He might know every miracle he performed from cradle to grave and share it perfectly and yet not know Christ. He might even believe all that he knows about Christ, but the Bible says that even the devils believe and tremble. Preaching Christ, hear me. Preaching Christ means proclaiming him as a crucified, resurrected, ascended, and living savior. Crucified, resurrected, he's alive. He's alive. Jesus lives and he is in possession of all power and all authority. So as believers, we don't offer the lost a dead and powerless Christ, but a present living Savior. A Savior who can enter into the most hopeless heart of the most hopeless man in all the world and change and transform him. Jesus is here today. Jesus is here to save. Jesus is alive. We are dealing with a living person, a living Savior, not a dead Christ. This is what it means to preach Christ. It's when people that are bound come under the preaching of a crucified, resurrected, living Christ and the chains break. It's when people that are lost get saved and actually become new creations. Preachers, preachers, preachers.
preachers like our pastor who lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, cause the blind to see, the lame to walk, and the dumb to talk. Preachers like our pastor who hit the rock in a barren dry land like this place was, and they just keep hitting until the water breaks forth. Are you grateful he did it? Are you grateful he did it? Are you grateful the rain's here? God's raising up some saints with some oil. Say, that's me. That's me. Fire in the pulpit and flames in the pews. God is separating. Revival is here. God's found some people that are tired of church as usual and are saying, give me the glory. I need the anointing. I want the real thing. If that's you, shout. Come on, if that's you, shout. 25, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. What will it take to wake you up? What will it take to wake you up? You have the Holy Ghost. You have an advantage. You can see things concerning your enemy if you just wake up. You have access to the unlimited power and knowledge of God. When you have the Holy Ghost and aren't asleep, you can supernaturally know what's going on with your kids and how to fix it. You can supernaturally know how to have the best marriage in the whole world. You can supernaturally know how to bring in resources. You can supernaturally know when to listen to that still small voice and wait five minutes before getting in your car to avoid a car accident. Be sober, be vigilant, don't sleep. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Don't get distracted. It's so easy. We get distracted with social media and television, and then we lose our secret place. Then we don't call on God like we used to. But saints of God, hear me. If we're going to see the power of God unleashed in our lives, in our families, in this church and in our city, like we say we want to, we have to get rid of the distractions. We have to get rid of the distractions. Fast, pray, get back to the altar, worship, sing, burst forth in a new kind of praise. There's been a breach. Say there's been a breach. There has been a breach. The devil is a destroyer of homes. The devil wants this next generation. The devil wants our children, but I came to tell all of hell tonight. Not on our watch, not on our watch, not on my watch, not in this church, not with our children, not with our marriages, not in this city, not in this nation. We are the repairers of the breach. There's been a breach, but there's a people. There's a barren land, but there's a people. There are broken homes, but there's a people. There's been a breach, but there's a people who are repairing. There's a barren land, but there's a people who are worshiping. There's broken homes, but there are people under the sound of my voice who will repair and restore and worship until revival hits your home. They're God's people. I said you're God's people. You're God's people. Don't let the devil lie to you. He's under your feet. Get ready for God to do a new thing. It's your time. It's your season. A refreshing is here. A refreshing is here. The rain is here. Times of refreshing are upon us. The glory, the rain, feels a little different than the anointing. With the power and the anointing, you can feel it in the atmosphere. Yes. But the glory says shined on Moses' face and he didn't even know it. The glory changes things sometimes you don't even know they're changing. There is a refreshing upon us. Do not miss it. Do not miss it. 
If there are barren places in your life, all you have to do is get a song in your spirit. Get a fresh praise in your belly. Look at somebody say, that's what I want. Say, I won't be satisfied until every devil in my house is gone. I won't be satisfied until all my children are filled with the Holy Ghost. I won't be satisfied until every sickness in my body is healed. I won't be satisfied until the rains of revival hit my home. When the barren sings, something begins to happen. When the barren sings, something begins to shift. When the barons sing, what was once lifeless begins to spring up. When the barons sing, what was once unfruitful begins to bud forth. When the barons sing, rain falls on the dry places. When the barons sing, your vats overflow with new wine and oil. When the barons sing, the place of your tent expands. Your cords lengthen. Your stakes strengthen. When the barons sing, you extend from the right and to the left. When the barons sing, your descendants get an inheritance. When the barons sing, the harvest comes. When the barons sing, the desolate cities become inhabited. It's harvest time until the whole world knows. Come on, it's harvest time until the whole world knows. Revival is here. Isaiah 51, listen to me. Listen to me, all who hope for deliverance, all who seek the Lord. Consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were hewn. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. The Lord will comfort Zion, Israel, the church again, and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness, hallelujah, will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. You see, it was impossible in the natural, verse one, because of the age and barren state of Abraham and Sarah to give birth to Isaac. But this scripture is showing that it was as impossible as creating a living child out of a rock or to dig one out of a pit of stone. God reached into a barren womb and he birthed a nation. You don't think he can bring life to your dead situation? God reached into a barren womb and he birthed a nation. He is a God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. His nature is to bring life where there is no life. His nature is to bring fruit where there is no fruit. His nature is to bring power where there is no power. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, the church, by his spirit and will bless and increase us just like he called Abraham when Abraham was just one man and then blessed and increased him. He will comfort all her waste places by rebuilding them and restoring them to their former glory. The church may be said to be desolate and like a wilderness and a desert, but a refreshing is here. God is making her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Come on, somebody. Does that make you happy? Sing, O barren, sing. That makes me happy. Sing, O barren, sing. That makes me happy. During times of affliction or pain, usually the music stops, yes? During times of barrenness or lack, usually the music stops. During times of dryness or powerlessness, usually the music stops. During times of emptiness or weariness, usually the music stops. When your road is rocky, when all hell is breaking loose in your life, usually it feels like the music stops. But herein lies the key 
of this message from the Lord. Whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your song. Whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your praise. Whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your worship. Get a song in your heart. Let loose in the Holy Ghost. Get a praise in your belly. Cry aloud. Break forth in the singing tonight because God inhabits the praises of his people. Refreshing is here. Refreshing is here. A refreshing is here. If you're here and you're hungry for a deeper depth and a higher height and you want God, desperately lift your hands right where you are. There's a refreshing rain. There's a refreshing rain. There is a refreshing rain here for all those that want it. We need a move. We need a move of God in America. We need a move of God in the churches of America. We need a move of God in our homes and in our families. Come on, lift up your hands. Reach and repair the breach. Reach and repair the breach. Reach and repair the breach. Cry aloud. Come on, cry aloud. Pray in your heavenly language. Reach and repair the breach tonight. Reach, repair the breach for your generation. Lift up your hands, open your mouth with a mighty decree. Sing, O Baron, sing. Something is breaking when we open our mouths in praise. God's enthroned on the praises of his people. Come on, jump to your feet. Jump to your feet. Barren places are springing forth in life. A fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a breakthrough praise. Showers of blessing are falling. Times of refreshing have come from the presence of the Lord. Refreshing for the dry and parched ground, the barren places, everything and everybody that comes beneath its downpour. There is no excuse or reason for any hungry, blood-washed child of God to remain in a barren, fruitless condition. There is no excuse or reason for any hungry, blood-washed child of God to remain in a barren, fruitless condition. Why? Because God the Holy Spirit is being outpoured as the rain from heaven and is willing to baptize, fill, and come in to abide wherever an empty, hungry, upturned vessel is found. And the Lord is no respecter of persons. No matter your age, no matter your circumstances, all are invited to ask and receive. Matthew 7, 8 says what? Everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. Tonight, there is latter rain for the asking. There's Holy Ghost power for the seeking. In the book of Acts, as Peter stood, filled to overflowing... And he looked ahead and saw the latter rain falling upon our generation. He cried aloud and said, this is that, which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions and declared that the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. An outpouring of the Holy Ghost is the greatest way hear me, an outpouring of the Holy Ghost is the greatest way to repair every breach of the enemy in your life, in your family, in the church, and in the world. The Spirit of God is being outpoured on all who are beneath his downpour. But instead of asking and receiving, many have been slowly withering and drying up spiritually. The Bible says, ask. Zechariah 10.1, ask the Lord for rain in the season of rain. Don't blame God. Run to the altar tonight. The Bible says, ask. If you need a refreshing, come to the altar tonight. 
If you're crying out to God for any barren place in your life to have fruit, come to the altar tonight. If there's a weariness, come to the altar tonight. If there's a desperation, come to the altar tonight. Sing, O barren, sing. Break forth into singing. Cry aloud and ask for rain in the time of rain. Ask. The Bible says ask. The Bible says ask. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Ask and you will receive. In his storehouse there is plenty. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. Let the barren sing. You might think to yourself, I don't have a good voice, so I'm not going to sing out in this atmosphere. Well, you can pray in the Holy Ghost. You can repeat the name Jesus. But part of this word is a command to let something out of you, to let a raw cry come out of you. If you want to see life burst forth into your circumstances, you got to open your mouth. you got to say, God, send the rain. God, let your spirit fill me. Let your spirit come upon me tonight. God, I want more of you. God, I need your presence. I need the rain of revival in my life. Open your mouth and cry aloud. Let the barren sing. Let something come out of you. Talk to your heavenly father. Cry aloud to God. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. A refreshing is here. A refreshing is here. A refreshing is here. A strengthening is here. Steph, a strengthening is here. A refreshing is here. Fruit, fruit, fruit in Jesus' name. I thank you, God.